Hormones released by the endocrine system affects the whole body, and those hormones do need to be regulated in some way so that we don't have runaway systems that are negatively affecting how we function. So typically, the hormones are released in bursts, so they're not released in slow quantities continuously. They're released in bursts and pulses, and those pulses come on, a lot of hormone enters the bloodstream, and then they stop, and they eventually dissipate over time. We typically regulate hormones with negative feedback loops, as I'm going to describe over here in a second. So essentially what I mean by negative feedback loop is the having a low amount of the end product of that hormone stimulates the hormones release to get more of the end product, and vice versa, having a high amount of hormone end product is going to inhibit the release of more hormone, lowering the amount of hormone that gets into the bloodstream. Let's give an example of an uh, endocrine feedback loop, a negative feedback loop. If we look over here, we have hormone X listed. So this just means a generic, think of a hormone of your choice. I'm gonna talk about glucagon. So glucagon's job is to raise blood sugar levels by releasing blood sugar, uh, by releasing glucose and increasing how much sugar is in the blood. So hormone X or glucagon, when it's in low concentrations in the body, that's going to lead to a low amount of the end product for that hormone, which is blood glucose for glucagon. When we have a low amount of blood glucose, that's going to feed back on the pancreas, which releases glucagon, to secrete more glucagon. When we have more glucagon release, that's going to increase the concentration of glucagon in the body, and specifically in the blood here, and that's going to lead to an increase of the end product of that, which is more blood glucose glucose. Having more blood glucose is then going to feed back, negative feedback here, to decrease how much of glucagon is released by the pancreas, and eventually the glucagon gets used up, and we end up with a low concentration of glucagon again, and the cycle continues. So this is a constant circular cycle causing oscillations and hormone levels. So hormone oscillations, which is what we see down here with this low hormone, high hormone, low hormone, high hormone here. Most hormones are going to oscillate in the matter of minutes to hours. Some hormones do oscillate in a longer uh, period of time, days to weeks. This, regardless of how long it takes for it to oscillate, think of like a house thermostat. It, where it's too cold, it ramps up. If it's too hot, it, it shuts off until the heat dissipates and it becomes cold again. And then it, when it gets cold, it ramps back up the heat. As I already mentioned, almost all the hormones in the body are going to use this negative feedback loop in order to control the hormones hormone level. Um, there are a handful of instances, think child labor and delivery, where we do have positive feedback loops where essentially you want a ramping up of hormones which will continue to progress the labor process until the baby is born. Um, but most processes of the body don't want a progressive increase in hormone level. We want a nice stable uh, level of hormones that are around some sort of set point that give us the amount of the end product that we want. It's not just the amount of hormone, though, in our blood that is going to affect the amount of end product. It's also the number of receptors. I'm going to be talking about that in the next video.